Ladies and gentlemen, William Kabogo is a very angry man. And William Kabogo is bitter and is annoyed with the deputy president, William Ruto, and his handlers. And William Kabogo confronted the deputy president through a WhatsApp message. And because William Kabogo was bitter, angry, and annoyed, that message was sent to a wrong group. And the message started spreading in Mount Kenya like bushfire. For those who follow the politics of this country very closely, the duty president has camped in the larger Mount Kenya region in the past week. And yesterday, the deputy president was in Muranga County, Kiaru constituency, actually hosted by Ndindinyoro. And as usual, the deputy president updated the events on his social media pages, Facebook and Twitter. And something happened. He failed to mention the name of William Kabogo. And William Kabogo did not take that lightly. And because I've always told you on this plat platform that in politics nothing happens out of mere coincidence, there is no way the people managing William Ruto's social media pages could have forgotten the name of William Kabogo. It was by design. So Kabogo understands this and he became very bitter and decided to write a message. This is what he, 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 he posted. He took the screenshot of that post by the deputy president on his page and uh, his, this is the message he, 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 he posted. You guys forgot me and my party. I hope it was an oversight, not intentional. <laughs> Let me tell you that what happened there is that it was intentional. That's the thing which William Kabogo should be willing to accept. This post was shared in a, in a page which is called Uteti Wakiambu WhatsApp group. It's one of the most active groups in that region. Almost all leaders are there, including President Ru Kenyatta, and it's monitored very closely. Then, just shortly after Kabogo made that post, William Ruto updated to include the name of Kabogo. I'm just trying to read to, to get you the the post, the original post. The original post says, articulated our bottoms up economic agenda to residents of Muranga Town and Karuri in Kiharu together with party leaders Musalia Mudavadi, ANC, Moses Kuria, Chama Chakazi, MPs Irungu Kangata, Alice Wahome, Ndindi Nyoro, Mary Wamaua, Rigadi Gashagwa, Rehab Mukami, Martha Wangari, and the rest. And it went there and included and former governors, which is also very sad, former governors Ferdinand Waititu first, and then Kabogo last. So which means they never forgot the name of Kabogo. Then the updated one now has articulated our bottoms up economic agenda to residents of Muranga town and Karuri in Kiharu together with party leaders, Musalem Navadi, William Kabogo, Tujibebe party, Moses Kura Chamacha Kazi, and the rest up to that point. You see why this post was not deliberate. When William Samoy Arab Roto wanted someone to associate with him, William Kabogo was the first one. If you remember during the ANC party's National Delegates Conference meeting, William Kabogo was present there. Gideon Moy, Jirongo, and uh, Kalonzo Musioka walked out on Muslim Levadim. But Kabogo stood, and when he was given a chance to speak, Kabogo spoke. 
it was then concluded that William Kabogo was going to be part and parcel of Kenya Kwanza. Not just as part and parcel, he was expected to be there as a core principal. But that's not been happening. And the other thing which took place here, which I think William Kabogo might have not noted, was the fact that when these people were speaking, the person who was speaking ahead of uh, Kabogo was actually Moses Kuria. So which means in William Ruto's pecking order, Moses Kuria who came the other day is now ahead of William Kabogo. And that's very interesting. So in this video, I want us to look at the message which the deputy president, in my view, was trying to send to William Kabogo. So it will be up to Kabogo to decide to do whatever he wants to do with that message. Because the message is already home. And by the way, before I get into those, for those watching for the first time, take a second or two, click that subscribe button. Just click it now, please. Don't forget, I know most of you guys probably, you, you normally get the notification, but you are not yet subscribed. Just click that subscribe button so that next time the, we post a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. To the subscribers, I want to thank you guys. And please, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Now, before we get into the coded message, which Ruto was sending to Kabogo, Moses Kuria is a very interesting politician. And I've always maintained, and I will stick by that, that Moses Kuria is President Uhuru Kenyatta's Trojan horse. I'm just trying to get uh, to his Facebook page. If you've been uh, following Moses Kuria, when William Ruto was in Kiambu, in uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta's backyard, Moses Kuria stated something which overshadowed William Ruto's trip to Gatundu South. He talked so much on that day. Yesterday, Moses Kuria was in Kiharu. Again, Moses Kuria never talked much. Today, if you go to his Facebook page, there's a post there which he has made. And in that post, Moses Kuria is suggesting that President Ruki Nyata is planning to go for a third term as a prime minister through Rail Udinga. I will remind you that Moses Kuria is not a madman. Moses Kuria is very strategic with whatever he's doing. Moses Kuria is now telling the Kikuyu nation that Uru Kenyatta intends to become the next prime minister of the Republic of Kenya, a very powerful prime minister. So that's a, a, a discuss, discussion which will now take place in the larger Mount Kenya region because of Moses Kuria. So he's a Trojan horse. But let me not get into that for now. If you want, I can do an analysis on why I strongly believe based on uh, the recent happenings, that Moses Kuria is a Trojan horse. Now, what message was the deputy president trying to send to William Kabogo? Number one is the pecking order in Kenya Kwanza. In Kenya Kwanza, if William Kabogo had hoped that he was going to be included as a co-principal, <laughs> My advice to Kabogo is that he should forget. The pecking order in Kenya Kwanza is very clear. There is uh, William Ruto. There is uh, there's William Ruto. There is uh, Muselem Davadi. There's Wetangula. Then there is Riyadi Gashagwa. Riyadi Gashagwa has been driving in the same vehicle with the deputy president. That's something which is a coded message to everybody. And while in Kiaru, I had uh, Riyadi Gashagwa advising the, pre the deputy president to nominate Ndindi Nyoro as a <laughs> running mate. There's a possibility, but that was for that occasion. Alice Wahome also comes ahead of uh, <laughs> William Kabogo. So basically, the deputy president is telling Kabogo that Kenya Kwanza is full. 
the only person they can give us space there is Moses Kuria. And they're giving Moses Kuria because Moses Kuria has come out very strongly and because he supports, I mean, he comes from President Ruk Kenyatta's backyard. So whether he's a Trojan horse, the duty president knows how he's going to deal with him. So that's number one. Number two, there's serious mistrust in one Kenya. I mean, in Kenya Kwanzaa. The truth of the matter is that, assuming this was an oversight, why would Kabogo make that noise? He would have sent Itumbi this message so that Itumbi would have updated the page. Or even uh, Hussein Mohammed, instead of going with it ballistically the way he did, to an extent that now it's all over. So there's mistrust. And that can explain why even in Western Kenya, there's a serious fallout within UDA party. Serious mistrust is emerging in UDA party and Kenya Kwanzaa. So I don't know how the DP will manage it, but that's the truth. The third message which, which, which Kabogo should take very seriously is the fact that the duty president doesn't appreciate him. If he was appreciated, he would have been the third. In fact, his presence there alone, the presence of Kabogo in William Ruto's event would have been a huge, huge deal. We've seen the deputy president acknowledging and receiving even MCS. The deputy president is not appreciating Kabogo. If he were appreciating Kabogo, Kabogo would not be complaining. He didn't begin today. In fact, even the pecking order, Kabogo, Kabogo is a former governor. You know, Kabogo is a former member of parliament. So, the message is very clear to Kabogo. Number four, in my view, <clears throat> I think the past is haunting these two guys, Kabogo and Ruto. How have they related in the past? William Kabogo believes very strongly that in 2017, he was locked out of governor by, by Ferdinand Waititu. He believes very strongly like that. That the deputy president had realized that Kabogo was going to be to emerge as a serious guy who would have interfered with his succession politics. Because, you know, politicians always want weak people. So the DP believed that Kabogo, being an independent guy, he had actually staged a contest against the president when he contested for that by-election, which he won on a... Was it Sisi Kwa Sisi? I don't know. I can't remember the name of that party. Kaboga has been in so many parties. <laughs> Was it Sisi Kwa Sisi or NAC? So he has been able to do that and won. So the DP feared that if Kabogo became as a second term governor, then in uh, 2022, he would be going for the presidency. And that would have complicated the equation for him. So the DP had to dehorn him a bit. And he was out of politics at that time up to now. So I think this past is something which is still causing a lot of friction between these guys. So the DP is not very well aware, uh, very sure with the Kabogo as things stand now. And lastly, maybe, maybe, I'm just saying, maybe, the intention was to provoke William Kabogo. Just provoke William Kabogo to leave. <laughs> yeah, so you provoke Kabogo, he gets angry, then the next thing you'll hear is Kabogo carrying his bags. Because again, these political parties in the larger Mount Kenya region is also going to complicate the equation for Ruto. The aspirants who will emerge from those parties and they're likely to win. You can't tell me that William Kabogo's party will not even win a single seat in the larger Mount Kenya. Kabogo might miss, but at least one or two people will come through that party. And that will hurt Ruto. Moses Kuria's party, at least someone will emerge from that party. And that will actually hurt the deputy president. So in my view, I think the deputy president is telling these guys that you can leave. You can leave. I don't know what you think. But that's my take. Thank you guys and please may you have a good day until next time. And by the way, what's, what's uh, Martha Karwa's game plan? What is Martha Karwa's game plan? Let me know. Bye-bye.